So I'm here at the headquarters of Echo in Fort Myer, Florida, and I'm here with Elliot. Tell us a little bit about Echo. Yeah, well, Echo is a Christian nonprofit that seeks to um, honor God by empowering um, smallholder farmers to be able to feed their families. One of the things that we like to say is we, we try to honor farmers' knowledge and seeing that they each have something to contribute. And one of those things that goes along, not just with growing plants, but is appropriate technology. And that's where I fit in, is looking for technologies or techniques that are sustainable for the environment, sustainable for the farmer economically, and they're culturally appropriate. So one of the things that we try to demonstrate is uh, building practices, so different building techniques. So you can see a little bit of the versatility of what you can do with bamboo, whether that be weaving baskets or fish traps or hats. All of our tables made out of bamboo. We can make pegs with them, so we can use those for joining bamboo together. Or we can even make strips like, like this, and it makes it... Uh, this is what we can use for either weaving or actually lashing bamboo together. So you, you can, technically you can make an entire structure out of just bamboo. Generally though, bamboo is not going to excel when it's exposed, fully exposed to weather. So you, you'd be better off to use something else for the roof. Keep a good hat on it so it keeps protected from, from the elements. And as you keep it uh, protected, it'll last um, the equivalent of wood. Bamboo uh, is incredibly uh, sustainable as a building product. It takes somewhere around three to four years to get a usable comb. It's one stalk of bamboo. I could harvest that and we treat it to keep it pests away from it, powder post beetle ma mainly, but also termites, and then I can use it as a building material. Whereas you think about a tree, uh, you know, it's going to take me maybe 20 years, 15, 20 years to get something remotely close to being use, useful for me. But for the bamboo, I can harvest a comb, put it to work after year three or four, and I still have my clump producing new shoots every year. For us, all the bamboo here, aside from one variety, are clumping varieties. So they're not, uh, they don't run. They don't send out runners and shoot you know, 50 or 100 feet away. As you see these plantings of bamboo, you notice they're pretty compact right to around a certain area. And they're just gonna send out new shoots, I'm trying to see, oh yeah, you can see some right here. Send out new shoots pretty close to the center um, and just keep working its way outward. Uh, so these are new shoots. This is this year's summer growth. And when they come out of here from this point, um, it'll take them just a month or so to reach almost full height. So they, they grow incredibly fast, but it takes them a matter of two to three years to actually harden to be usable as a building material. The smaller types we're not gonna use for construction, but they, they can be useful um, for uh, weaving baskets and furniture and those sorts of things. But some of the thicker walled stuff, the varieties that we have, you can do some pretty amazing uh, construction with them. They're very versatile. Bamboo has a higher strength to weight ratio than steel, so you can do a lot with it if you know how to build with it. The challenge is it's not exactly like wood. It's hollow in the middle, it's round. Um, you have nodes where it's solid, um, but in the middle part it's, it's hollow. And that means uh, it's also very hard on the outside and softer on the inside. That's the reverse of, of wood, which is hardest on, in the middle and softer on the outside. Now, that, that makes it uh, better for the mechanical properties of, of holding together and, and performing really well as a structure, but in order to build with it, you have to understand different techniques for joining it especially. So joinery techniques, um, lashing is a big one, um, pegging, using uh, bolts, um, special cuts to, to conform around the other pieces of bamboo so that you get a good amount of surface area in the, the joint. Um, all of these things you just have to, you have to learn by someone who's done it before and that's part of what we do here is help people understand how to work with bamboo um, in a way that they can then go back and use it wherever they are to be a, a more uh, useful building product.
One of them over here you can see modeled after maybe a West African house using a wattle and daub technique. So you build the frame out of wood or bamboo and then you mix up your cob, your, your, your clay and sand, water and straw and then you plaster it onto that, that frame. This is pretty simple construction, low cost, yet it's actually pretty durable, especially if you design it right. Round structures are gonna hold together a little bit better. Um, and believe it or not, I mean, this thing withstood the last hurricane we had, uh, just because of the structure, the way it's designed. Um, even with heavy rains here, we have a really steep pitched roof so we can keep the water off of it. It's a nice one to demonstrate for people, especially when the sun's <laughs> d uh, shining down, you go into there and it's cooler. The thatch roof lets, uh, keeps the heat out. The, the thicker earthen walls keep things um, a little bit cooler during the heat of the day. So it's just, it's, it's nice to be in, unlike a, a tin roof sort of house or something like that where the sun's heat is just gonna radiate through. But there's also other techniques that we recommend um, or teach people how to use, how to build with. This is dedicated mostly to earthen buildings. So we talked a little bit about wattle and daub. You can also make your own bricks. So this is compressed earth block. We typically try to stabilize the, the block with about 5% Portland cement. Um, and it would go into a press like this one here. So we measure out the mix. We mix sand and clay and then the cement and a little bit of water. And we put it into the press and then you close up the press like this. And uh, as you push down this way, that is gonna push the, the ram up, the bottom up, and it's going against itself there on that plate. And then, you bring it back down this way, open up your lid, and then you can eject the block and you take it carefully because it is still wet and um, can break apart fairly easily, but you take it and place it in the shade and then let it cure for um, three weeks about uh, and to get it strong enough to build with. Another couple of different techniques for earthen building would be using adobe block, so actually using frames rather than pressing. You'd use like a, a wooden frame like this. You'd make your cob, soil, and straw mixture, put it all in the frame, pull the frame out, and just leave it there. Let it dry in the sun for um, several weeks until it's good and dry, and then you can build with them. Earth bag. Construction is another one that we, we demonstrate a low cost way to get around varying soil textures. So if you don't quite have the right mix of clay and sand, you can use the earth bag. The bags actually stabilize the soil. And then uh, just bottle bricks, stuff and trash, and you can put plastic and stuff that doesn't break down in there. And you can use them as fillers um, in walls, um, especially non-load bearing walls. You just need a filler, you can make a bottle brick wall. Tell us a little bit about Echo and what their their whole like goal and plan is. We act as basically a, a catalyst, I think, in, in a network of development workers, practitioners, people that are working with smallholder farmers um, to share knowledge, to be verifying claims. People say, hey, this is working well. We say, okay, let's try it and see if it really does work and then disseminate that to the network of people that read Echo's publications. One of the things that we like to say is we, we try to honor farmers' knowledge and seeing that they each have something to contribute. And one of those things um, I think that uh, goes along not just with growing plants but is appropriate technology and that's where I fit in. It's looking for technologies or techniques that are um, sustainable for the environment, sustainable for the farmer economically, um, and they're culturally appropriate. They are usually locally sourced and available um, where they are working. They're able to maintain them and use them long term. How do you guys afford to do this educational work? So we are a nonprofit. Um, we're funded mostly by individual donors. People like you and me who have a heart to make a difference in the world. We want to um, be able to contribute to good work that's 
going to be a long-term solution to keep people from going hungry. And then also we have a demonstration farm here, so we have public tours. We generate some revenue from the from the tours, but then also from the nursery and bookstore and seeds. But by far the majority comes from individual donations. So speaking of the individual donations, there is a link in the description below. As you're watching this video, if you like what you see and you want to help support this company, which I highly recommend, check out that link and you can do so. All right, hopefully you liked that video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button. Don't miss any of the wonderful videos we have coming all the time. And also go check out Echo Farms. Echo is a great location to, to get some education in and you will love the tour. Again, the link is in the description below so you can go down there and support Echo and all the stuff they're doing. Now that you're subscribed, you won't miss any of the future videos, but until then, check out some of these other videos. They're pretty cool. We'll see you in one of those videos.